right we're going to talk about the significant test for the difference of two proportions all right uh the difference of proportions and so without further ado let's talk about this all right so uh, when you're doing a significant test for the difference in two proportions all right and this will be called a, a two sample all right um z test all right for p1 minus p2 or the difference of proportions now when you have this two sample z test um if we still go through the four step process okay and the four step process is pretty much the same all right we have our um parameters um we have to define what that is so you have to state your parameter and the level of significance all right so parameter all right and level of significance okay um, you have to then plan with conditions all right now when you have this generally when you have plan with conditions um, we want to make sure it's random obviously okay um, the second part is independence now when you talk about independence uh, there is a little bit of caveat here that we really haven't discussed in my previous tutorials is that when you have an experiment a randomized experiment Okay, um, there is no need for independence. And in a randomized experiment, um, no need for, all right, um, the 10% condition. All right, but if you have um, something other than that, then you do need to use a 10. So if you have a sample, all right, a random sample or samples, all right, um, you do need the 10% condition. So no need for 10% if there's a randomized experiment in doing that, all right? And then finally, we do need to have the normalization. We need to make sure it's normal when we have it, okay? I'm um, using large count. Now, from here, when we have this is, now we're looking at our do. Now, when we look at the do, we have two different things. And so when we have a value where P1 minus P, um, two is equal to zero. Okay, so we're doing our, our, our test here. Um, yes, our mean is going to equal zero because we're not expecting there to be any difference between the two when we're doing a test. However, when we're finding our standard deviation, um, unlike previous ones where we take, like when we did a confidence interval and we took each one individually, when you do a test, what you're doing is you're going to assume that all of the groupings were together okay all the groupings are together and they all had pretty much the same result okay and so what we're doing is we're combining the proportions a combined proportion of this and when we do that we're going to take uh, a um, statistic or p combined that's why we see the p p hat c so this is like both proportions combined and we're going to take that percentage and then one minus that percentage over each of the individual samples because we're going to assume we're assuming in this test is that since it equals zero that really it doesn't matter um where they are located okay because it's just one big sample and so the proportions are going to be the same but we're going to divide that by the number of each sample um just because um, they're different samples but we're going to assume that there is no difference between them um, for our stat. And so that's our do. And then we finally, for our last part, is we are going to conclude the same way as we conclude every other test. <clears throat> All right, so um, let's try one of these. Let's check our understanding on this. And so with that, um, let's say we have to, to study long-term effects of preschool program for poor children. Researchers design an experiment. Okay, so we have an experiment here. All right, um, they recruit 123 children who had never attended preschool from low-income families in Michigan. Researchers and families randomly assigned 62 of the children to attend preschool, um, paid for by a study budget, and 61 to serve as a control group who were not going to go to preschool. One response variable of interest was the need for social service as adults. Over a 10-year period, 38 children in the preschool group and 49 in the control group have need for social service. All right, so do these data provide convincing evidence that preschools reduce the later need for social services for children like the ones in the study? So essentially, um, we have our, our P1, okay? So P1 is, um, our P1 is the true, all right, proportion 
I'm just going to define these individually first. The true proportion of um, uh, of adults. All right. Um, well, I guess they're not necessarily adults, but portion of um, yeah, <laughs> the adults. I guess it would be adults um, needing. All right. Social services. I'm just going to say social services as s social service services. Um, if attending attending preschool, all right, attending preschool, all right, and P2 is the true proportion, all right, the true proportion of adults needing, all right, social services, um, if um, not attending preschool, okay? All right, and so, all right, and so what we have then is P1 minus P2 is the true difference, all right, um, in proportion, proportions, of um, adults needing social services um, if attending oops if attending preschool attending preschool or not okay and so that is what we have that and that's our parameter okay now so now um, we're going to then um, go through here and we're going to now do our hypothesis so our null hypothesis is if we take p1 all right minus p2 um, that this is going to equal zero so we're assuming that there's not going to be any difference whatsoever now our alternate hypothesis is that um <clears throat> what we're ex expecting is that uh they recruit and never intend. All right, research or randomly assign this one response variable over the 10 years and control group. Do they convince them that the preschools reduces the later need for service? So essentially, um, if it reduces the need, then there should be um, fewer. So the difference would actually be um, less than zero. All right, less than zero. Okay, that would be less than zero. Okay. And so that is what we are looking for here, okay? Because there would be fewer, so that would be um, less than zero in, in this proportion between these two. So that's our alternate. Um, we're going to do this to a level of significance or an alpha value of, all right, 0 0.05. All right, 0 0.05, that's where we're going to take it at, okay? And so we're going to now look at our conditions. So what are we going to do now is that we're going to state that um, we're going to do a, a two sample, all right, um, Z test for P1 minus P2, all right? And now for our conditions, our conditions met, um, well, conditions, all right, is, is it randomized? Yes, it's random, all right, random assignment, okay? Um, two, we don't need, since it is a random assignment, and it's a random experiment, a randomized experiment, we are exempt um, from the independence rule. And then three, all right, is this normal? And we're going to use large count here. So we're going to figure out, all right, our test, test stat here. And so we're going to go over here and say, what is our first one? Um, that is going to be for the preschool. So, um, so over 10 years, 37 in the preschool route. So 37, all right, or sorry, 38, 38, all right, out of um, 62, all right. And then we have P hat 2 of our stat. That's going to be 49 out of 6, uh, sorry, out of 61, all right, in that, okay. And so... We're going to find each one individually, all right? And we realize that each one of those, all right, is going to be greater than 10, 
all right because obviously we're going to have 38 all right <laughs> and 38 minus 62 all right um and so we have normal because each one all right <clears throat> we have this one right here p hat of one times 62 all right and then we have um one minus p hat of one times 62 all right both of those are going to be greater than zero i'm going to get over here all right um 62 both of those are going to be greater than or equal to 10 this is going to be greater than or equal to 10 and the same normal all right if we had p hat of two all right times 61 all right that's going to be greater than or equal to 10 and then finally the same thing over here and i'm kind of writing on a angle i apologize all right one minus that all right and that's going to equal times 61 that's going to be greater than or equal to 10 as well all right so all our conditions are met to do this test okay so um i'm going to go down a little more i ran out of room okay so i stated this i have my hypothesis i have my condition met so now we're going to go to the do phase all right of this and i'm going to go right here so now how do we do this well we need to figure out okay a z score for this okay and in our z score okay we're going to use our combined proportion minus zero all right um actually yeah okay <clears throat> um our combined difference oops, my combined difference. we can find our combined difference all right and then minus that from zero and then find that for our standard deviation so we're going to take p hat of one minus p hat of two minus zero all right over the square root of p hat combined over n1 plus oops, times all right um one minus p hat of c all right and that's going to be plus p hat of c times one minus p hat of c all over n of two all right so we gotta do that um and finding these two we got to find our combined proportion okay so let's find that value um in doing that so what we're going to take is um our p hat of c is going to equal 38 plus 49 over all right 62 plus 61 and we're going to find out what that proportion is okay and in doing so all right we have 38 plus 49 divided by um, 123 and we have a value of point, point seven one. All right, we're gonna go put point seven one. Okay, so we're gonna go point seven one here. Um, next thing is now we're going to figure out what these different values are. Okay, what's that difference gonna be? Um, Thirty eight divided by sixty two. All right, we know it's gonna be point six one. All right, and then 49 divided by 61 is going to be 0 0.80, 0 0.80. Okay, so, and going through here, when we take, all right, these two values, 0.61, all right, minus 0.8, we'll have a value of negative 0.19. Minus zero all over. All right. And then we'll have the square root of 0 0.71 times 0 0.29 all over 62. And then plus that to, all right, 0 0.71 times 0 0.29 all over 61. And I'm kind of writing the angle here. I apologize. And that's our test stat right there. Okay, so let's find out what that stat is. Um, we'll go and put this into our calculators, and you can do that, 0 0.71 times 0.29, all right? And then we'll divide that by 62, all right? And we'll add that to 0 0.71 times 0 0.29 divided by 61. And we have 
a total of right here, the 0.19 divided by 0 0.0812. We'll go like that. All right. And so we'll have all right, negative 0.19 divided by 0 0.0812. <coughs> And we have this. So negative 2.33. All right. Or you can maybe run that to 4. Okay. 4. Well, that's a pretty large um, statistic. And so we will take this and find whatever our p value is. Okay. So what's our p value? Well, taking this value right here and looking at this, our n is 0. And we're going to 1. And we're going to have here negative 2.34 is right there. Okay. And so let's find our p-value. And our p-value is going to, we can go to normal CDF, or you can use your table A and figure that out. All right. And doing all this stuff right here, and we get an answer of, all right, a p-value of, um, point zero zero nine, <clears throat> point zero zero nine. Awesome sauce. All right, cool. <clears throat> and now looking at that p value of point zero zero nine. Well, is that um level of significance of all right point zero five? Well, that definitely is less than that. So since all right point zero zero nine is less than point zero five, um we reject the null null we have convincing evidence convincing evidence um to support all right the alternative hypothesis all right we can say that okay cool and so um, that is what we have right there. So now the next thing is um, if we want to continue on there, so we can go look at number two. And based on your conclusion in question number one, would you have made a type one error or a type two error? Explain your reasoning. Well, since we um, rejected the null hypothesis, so it would have been a type one error. <coughs> All right, because. Um, we rejected the null. All right, rejected the null. Um, rejected the null. And um, if that, if type one error and if um, the null was true, was true, then guess what? Then um, we made an error. In error. All right. And so that is what we found there. Okay. And going through this. So um, that's what we had. So what we had right here is we went through the four step process of completing a, all right, a two sample Z test for the difference of proportions, P1 minus P2. Um, first, you want to state your, all right, parameter. You want to do your hypothesis. Um, we want to test our conditions. We want to then go through and do our find our statistic. Make sure that you combine your values right here. All right, for your um, your test portion, and going through here, we can identify what the test stat is, and then our p-value, and then make our final conclusion. All right. Well, I hope that made some sense, and I pray that uh, you are able to use this information and do better on the next problems. All right. Have a great day.